Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna take a trip back into history and talk about the earliest of red dot sites. But first we're gonna start off talking about a modern red dot site like you see here on this SIG Virtus. This is an Aimpoint Comp M5, and this kind of represents the latest and greatest in red dot technology. The batteries will last five plus years, and the batteries are easily swapped out. The sites are nice and small, and they're easily used. I mean, when you get these things zeroed, you can shoot pretty precise groups at 100, 200, even 300 yard score hits easily on man-sized targets. So these red dot sites have become commonly used by people in the military and also by civilian shooters and people that shoot gun games and stuff like that. They're very fast into action, there's no magnification, and they just work really, really well. But before we got to this point, if you go back in time to the 1970s, which we're going to do in this video, you'll see just how much these red dot sites and the concept of these red dot sites, how they work, has evolved over the years, over the decades. All right, so we're gonna start off by shooting a few rounds out of the SIG Virtus using the Comp M5, I have the front lens cover up. Now, if you take a look at this lens cover on the front of the Comp M5, it's solid. You can't see through it, but the rear lens cover, you can actually see through. And there's a reason for that. I'm gonna show you here in a moment. And it goes back to the concept of the early red dot sights. So right now I'm just gonna put down the, the rear lens cover. And these are the lens covers that ship with the Comp M5. I'm gonna leave the front one up so I can see through the sight. I'm gonna take a few shots at the challenge target at 100 yards. Very easy to do, very precise uh, rounds on target. Now what I'm gonna do is flip this lens cover down. Now I cannot see through the sight. I'm gonna turn the brightness down. And I'm gonna take a, a shot at that 100 yard target again. And I'm still hitting the target even though I can't see through the sight. So how is that possible? Let's talk about it. We would like to thank our friends at Big Daddy Unlimited for helping to make this and other videos possible. If you'd like to help us out, swing by the BDU website, and just for 99 cents, you can try out their service for one month. And they're basically like the Sam's Club of the online world, so check them out. If you would like to stay a member, go by militaryarms.org. There's a big link right at the top of the website, and you can stay a member for 20% off every month going forward. So please check them out. If we go back to the 1970s, there was a site that created quite a stir, and that site was called the Single Point Red Dot Site. It was actually written up in the popular mechanics of the day, which meant it was kind of super cool. Uh, I believe that they even had discussions in the English Parliament about the Red Dot Site. I mean, it really was revolutionary in that it projected a dot out there into space that you could put over a target on a firearm like this and manage to hit your target with both eyes open. And it really kind of started off the whole idea of what we now know as the Biden concept, which was started by Glenn Biden of Trijicon, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But the concept of both eyes open and a dot being projected onto the target came before Glenn Biden's involvement, who went on to found Trijicon. This site that I have here came after the single point site and it wound up being manufactured in South Africa. The sight, you cannot see through it. Here in the nose, you can see that there's a little fiber optic that's taking ambient light and making a red dot in a black space in this tube. And so how it works, because you can't see through it, is you have both eyes open, you focus on the target, you just move the, the sight into your field of view, and magically a red dot a fairly large red dot, I would imagine it's six MOA or larger, appears in your vision and you put the dot on the target and pull the trigger. Now, it was intended initially for low light operations and for quick snap shooting in CQB. So we'd quickly bring the, the weapon up and then put, see the dot, boom, boom. So you're not really taking the time to aim. The same concept that we use modern red dot sights for. If you sit here and use the sight too long, you sit there and stare through it it, sometimes you'll get mostly black and other times you'll see a black wall moving in towards the dot and other times you can see the dot just hovering over the target. So the longer you stare through it, some people will say that you'll actually use, lose your point of aim point of impact. Now I've not had that problem with the sights at all, but what I do know is that for the cleanest dot, it occurs right when I first bring the red dot sight into my field of view and then it magically appears over the target at 100 yards. Now at 100 yards, that dot 
almost as big is as big as the challenge man size target which is a full torso size target it's made out of aircraft aluminum it's very durable and what's really interesting about the Arm armson oeg and this is a box of a currently manufactured site and this is a currently manufactured site is it also has tritium in it so you have the fiber optic and then tritium will pr produce that red dot in absolute darkness or in low light and that is what really made it unique so now we have a site that we can use in daylight and at night and snap shoot quite quickly onto targets in close quarters combat this site would have been an imported so glenn biden started up uh, Trigicon, but in 1981, he had met the folks, he had a common friend that he was introduced to the folks that were building the OEG in South Africa, and he was interested in it, and he decided, okay, I'm going to become the importer for Armson and bring these OEGs in as a side job, and so he set himself up as Armson Inc. in the United States, and then later, after a couple of name changes, wound up being Trigicon, and it's interesting, you go on the Trigicon website and look at their history link, you'll see them talking about the OEG, again, the occluded eye gun site. And so that's where the name, you know, the, the Glenn Biden, the Biden aiming concept, I believe is taught to US soldiers now when they use their ACOGs, both eyes open, and of course, when they use red dot sights. But that's where that got started here in the United States in the name of the sighting concept. What's even more interesting, which we'll talk about in the next segment, is how this site worked its way into the US military. All right, so let's go ahead and load this up. I have some federal 55 grain 223 here, and it is supplied to us by our friends at Federal. I'd like to thank them for supporting the channel with the ammunition. Also, guys, if you like videos like this, be sure to like and share it. So do that down below the video, like, share, and also comment on the video, and let me know if you've ever used a site like this. It really helps us grow. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna look at the target, and I'm gonna bring the site up into my field of view. And I can easily hit that man sized target. Now I can't see the site at all. But yet I can easily score center of mass hits at 100 yards. So some folks will say that the site you can't be used to go out to, you know, 150, 200 yards. But let's try a shot out at 150. Now this is pretty much obscuring the target at 150. Hit it. Let's go to 200. Hit. I think I missed that one. Hit. So at 200, it really is obscuring the target. So I can use these red dot sites and so could the people in the 1980s when this site would have been imported into the United States right around 1983 or 85, these sites started to show up in the United States. I think it was 1983. So the notion that they're only good for CQB and not capable of engaging targets at greater distance is nonsense. Easily hit those targets at range. So now let's get into the US military and how this site found its way into the hands of US Marines in the invasion of Panama. This is a Colt AR-15A2, which is a replica of the M16A2 adopted by the United States Marine Corps in 1985. And on top of it, I have a classic Armson OEG. And this would be correct for a, um, a build, a retro build, if you want to go back to the invasion of Panama in 1989. But we'll get into that here in a moment. So the U.S. military was experimenting with sites like this. It goes back to what I talked about in the opening of the video. The single point red dot site was actually used by special operations operators with their JU-5 rifles during the Raid of Sante in Vietnam, in North Vietnam. 
to rescue hostages or actually prisoners of war, which sadly they weren't there, but that's beside the point. So that was the first known usage of a site like this by the US military. And it'd be later in 1985 with a gentleman by the name of Chris Rice was sitting there talking with some Marines and they were talking about the concept of low light aiming devices like the Armson and it came up in discussion. So he ran home, grabbed his personal weapon, came back, showed it to the Marines and, and they're all like, yeah, this is pretty cool. So then we fast forward to 1989 and the US invasion of Panama and there would have been US Marines actually using sites like this on their A2 rifles during that invasion. So the use of these types of sites by the US military is interesting. It was being used. And even though red dot sites that were battery powered were on the market as early as 1975. But keep in mind, again, batteries were an issue. Tritium has, has a half-life you know, of seven years or sometimes longer. So you don't have to change the batteries on this site. And even when the tritium goes bad, if there's any ambient light whatsoever, this nose is still gonna capture that light and project the dot. Now it's just not gonna work in complete darkness because there's no tritium powering it. But you can send them in and they can put new tritium in for you. So that's another thing that's really cool. As I said, they, they maintain the existing molds, but even if you have an old original OEG site, you can still send it in and get the tritium put in. As a matter of fact, Chris Rice took that original OEG that convinced the Marines to use it he actually sent that site in recently to Armson and had that thing uh, recharged with Neutridium. So that's really, really cool history. It's also interesting to note that these sites continue to be commonly used on grenade launchers. When I was at SHOT Show several years ago, I went to a live fire demonstration. They had an H&K 40 millimeter grenade launcher there. And sure enough, right on top of it was an Armson OEG, which surprised me back then. And now I know that they're still using them commonly on grenade launchers around the world and have been doing so for about 40 years. So even though they're not commonly used on rifles anymore, um, you will see them if you, you know, use a military a grenade launcher, uh, you may run into them being used on those. So on the A2, same concept. Now, we get to that, I mentioned the Biden aiming concept and Glenn Biden was the founder of Trijicon. We go back to the single point site. Before that, it was the single point aiming concept, but it just became known in the United States as the Biden aiming concept because Glenn Biden founded Trijicon, imported these, and he um, got the namesake of having the Biden aiming concept on the sites, even though it, it predates his involvement. Okay, so we got a challenge target at 100 yards. And for snap shooting, just put your face down and quick hits. Now it's hitting a little bit to the right. We only zeroed this one at 50, so I'm going to aim at 150 and hold a little bit left. And scored a hit. Scored another hit. So again, just like with the SP-1 carbine, this is very quick and easy to use even at range. So if you're looking for something different in your A2 retro build or earlier, like if you want to do a Sante raid, you have to find a single point for that. You can find sites like this available. Again, the OEG is, is still currently available and they're making this classic version for folks to do these types of retro builds. Hopefully you found the information in this video useful. You may have seen these OEGs at you know, gun shows or hanging out in gun shops somewhere and didn't quite know what they were and now you know what they are. They are still available. They're still being currently made. There's more modern versions of the site that have a more protective cone that protects this nose a little bit more. And then you have the classics like we've been showing you here in this video this afternoon. Guys, we are supported by you, our viewing audience via Patreon. There is a link down below. Armson didn't send us the sites for free. We purchased them and uh, they're not paying us to do this video. Again, we're supported by you, our viewing audience, so we can bring you uh, as unbiased information as humanly possible. So link down below, give it a click, check it out, consider becoming part of our Patreon family. Secondly, right here underneath the video player, there's a little join button. Cl consider clicking that join button, checking out some of the incentives and supporting us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. All right, guys, with that, we're gonna fire off a few more rounds, head back to the house and put the A2 away. Thanks for watching.
those old sights still work very, very well. Now my trigger's not resetting on my AR. <laughs> oh Lord. And it works fine otherwise. 